So after watching the film, um, you know, this is kind of a collective loss by our team. Uh, I don't think we, you know, played the way we wanted to play for sure. We didn't execute the way we wanted to play. Uh, we had a few great individual performances. Um, you know, guys played extremely well. Um, but we also had some guys that uh, it's our expectation that we need as coaches to try to help them get to where they can play better. Uh, there was too many things that we did in the game. I mean, 17 penalties is, you know, just 130 yards of field position. Probably lost about 70 yards of field position on special teams. Um, whether it was a poor execution by a specialist or, you know, the mistake we made on trying to pick the ball up when it wasn't a live ball. I mean, that's 200 yards in the game, so that's like two touchdowns probably. Gave up explosive plays on defense, um, which is something that we had done a good job of to that point of not doing. And, um, you know, the last five plays of the game, uh, we didn't execute. You know, we can talk about running the ball, but we dropped the pass. Clock would be running, and we would be closer. Uh, we miss a hot and don't run the route right. Clock would be running, and um, we would be closer. So um, this is something that, from the bottom up, all right. I mean, I'm talking about coaches. I'm talking about every player. Uh, I'm talking about me. Uh, we all got to do a better job to, you know, help these guys learn from their mistakes, and improve and get better. Um, you know, this is not the way you want to manage through a season by games coming down to the last play. Uh, and the things that you did up to that point got the game to that point. Um, so, you know, we want guys to focus on, you know, hey, have fun doing your job, have great energy and enthusiasm and intensity, and go out there and play the next play. Um, don't worry about results uh, and uh, the consequences of those results uh, because sometimes that creates anxiety, which sometimes doesn't lead to positive performance. So that's something that we need to improve on. You know, Mississippi State's an outstanding team. Um, I think they're five and two. You know, Mike Leach is one of the most difficult uh, guys offensively to try to defend uh, relative to their offense. Uh, the quarterback, Will Rogers, does a great job with that. They're one of the leading passing teams in the country. Uh, they've got a good receiving core. I think they're running the ball more effectively this year than maybe in years past. Their defense is very aggressive create a lot of turnovers, um, do a lot of pressuring uh, of the quarterback. Uh, they're good on special teams. They've got good specialists. So it's going to be a challenging game for us and uh, see how our players respond to you know, the situation that we've created for ourselves. Across the entire season, has there been a particular type of penalty that you found to be a significantly bigger problem than others? Uh, whew. well, you know, we've been harping on pass interference, you know, to keep our hands off of people. I do think in some cases we do a good job of guarding them. Uh, we just got to do a better job of timing up the SWAT, whatever. Um, too many pre-snap penalties, false starts on offense. Uh, I think we had three in the game. Um, and two of them were guys that they're looking at the ball. You know, they're not even thinking about the clap or the snap count or whatever. Uh, those those things are jumping off sides on defense. Um, had a couple of those. So, you know, those are the kind of penalties that are undisciplined, not focused, uh, not looking at what you're supposed to look at so that, you know, we don't have those issues. But they all put you behind the eight ball. Um, so, you know, when guys are out there competing, you know, sometimes we drive a guy to the, guy to the ground and end up getting a holding call. You like that kind of aggressiveness. You don't want guys to hold, and we're certainly not coaching that. But 
Um, you know, there are penalties of, you know, sort of omission, and uh, then there's, you know, penalties that guys are just, you know, playing hard and trying to do the best they can, and every now and then, you know, something bad happens. So easier to live with those than the others. On those undisciplined penalties, how were those addressed? How were those fixed in the week afterwards? Well, I think you got to do it in practice. Uh, I mean, I don't. I, I think you create all these habits, you know, in practice. And I think we got to make players more accountable in practice for doing things correctly, paying attention to detail, and doing the little things right. Um, I don't. You know, we we can't go. You know, hang them up for doing this. There are players. And we need to get them to understand. Uh, what they need to do not to allow these things to happen and understand the consequences uh, of what happens when you do it. And I think if you continue to do it consistently, um, maybe we need to play somebody else. Um, you know, there's always a little fear that goes with respect and respecting what it takes to win. You also should know that, hey, my job could be in jeopardy if I don't respect the things I need to do to win. Were you given any kind of explanation on why the, the hit on Bryce wasn't rule targeting? No. No, we turned the plays in. I'm sure the league office will look at it and make a determination. Um, so, you know, there's two things um, that is an issue at issue here is targeting but you're also not supposed to hit the quarterback in the head. Last year against Texas a and Malachi got thrown out of the game. Guy was out of the pocket, jumped up to block the ball, and ended up almost accidentally hitting him in the head, got ejected from the game. So there's, there's really two things that should be looked at. You mentioned the explosive plays given up on defense, specifically for, for pass defense. What needs to be done to, to limit those going forward? Well, I mean, we limited them all year long. So we've had less explosive plays this year than we've had all year. So um, we certainly don't want to give them up. Uh, they did a good job of taking those wide splits uh, and creating some matchup things because of the wide splits. Um, so, you know, this guy's got to play with better focus, better leverage. Um, got to be able to cover people better. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, I, I can't. They are our players. We think they're good players. We think they're capable. Uh, they need to play with good technique and good focus on the little things that help you make those plays. Coach, of course, no one likes to lose, obviously, but when a loss happens, what do you expect to see from like, the leadership group in getting these guys focused and getting these guys understanding that we got to play to the standard? Yeah, well, I, look, I, I think that, um, you know, our players all want to win. And regardless of how everybody feels, um, we feel worse. You know, the players are out there competing. Um, they're, they're, playing hard, uh, maybe not always playing smart, um, maybe making too many errors that we need to fix. Um, and as coaches, we need to help them fix them, teach them. Uh, they need to learn from the lessons that, um, you know, learning occurs best when you make a mistake. But you got to take advantage of that. And I think it's important for our players to get that. Um, you know, it seemed like we had maybe, you know, you want to have great energy and you want to be loose. Um, I thought we were tight, especially starting the game. Um, I mean, coming out of the locker room, our players always chant. They weren't chanting. I said, why aren't you guys chanting? What's up with that? And um, so it's not that they don't want to do it. It's not that they're not trying. Uh, I just think we, we've got to place our, get our focus in the right place and our psychological disposition in the right place so that we can – look, when you compete, it's fun to compete when you play the next play. It's no different than playing a pickup basketball game. 
All right, he's got the ball. I got to guard him. I got the ball. I got to beat him. That, that's how you play. That's how you compete. You have fun. Sometimes he wins, sometimes you win. All right, but you're having fun doing it. You're competing. That's what's important. And you can't worry about the outcome. You can't sit there all tensed up because you're afraid the guy's going to shoot a three on you. You, you got to play the play and then go play the next play if he does make a three. So um, it's so, so much more fun that way. Uh, not looking at the scoreboard, not worrying about results, not being fearful of what's going to happen if something bad happens or if we lose a game. Just go play. Compete. And then when the game's over, if we do that and we do it well as a collective group, you know, we can live with the results. So that's what it's our job, my job, to help these players get to that point. Hi, Coach, back here. Uh, just talking about all those learning lessons, you can never anticipate what a player is going to learn or how they're going to react from what you're coaching them. So how much of this is just trusting that these players at this point in the season are going to become more disciplined and play the way you want them to? Or how much is it on the coaching staff to try to get them there even though we're at this point in the season? It's both. It's both. And everybody responds differently. I think you're exactly right. But we can't continue to tolerate guys that aren't doing the things they need to do to be successful. You know, nobody's entitled to a position. You know, everybody's earned the position that they're in by showing that they have the capability and ability to do it on a consistent basis. And uh, that's something that you have to continue. And the grind of the season, being in the middle of the season, being a little bit hurt, tired, whatever, can't lose your focus on doing the things you need to do to continue to improve and get better because other people are looking at your flaws too. So, you know, I told the, the players a little story about, you know, a carpenter has a special light that he finished carpenter to see if the wood is exactly what he wants it to be. He's looking for flaws in the wood. Well, people are looking for flaws in you, all right? Whether it's how you block, how you tackle, how you cover, whatever it is you do. Um, how we cover punts, wh whatever it is we do. And we have to be aware of that and know that we need to correct these things all right, so they don't become issues for us in the future. Two more quick ones, Nick, and then Tony. Um, Bryce was taking a couple big hits during the game. We talked about the potential targeting one. I guess how hard is it to kind of tell him, like, hey, you got to protect yourself. You don't want to get in a situation like you did hurting his shoulder before, but also you know, extending plays and making stuff happen like he can. Look, Bryce is a competitor, and he's a great competitor, and he's a good leader on the team. And we need to do a better job of protecting him, and we certainly don't want him to get hit. Um, can we do that 100%? You know, sometimes he scrambles and runs and gets hit. Um, but he's a competitor, and he's one of the guys that is a real warrior, you know, on our team when it comes to – doing whatever he needs to do to try to help the team win, whether it's scramble, sit in the pocket all right, for the last minute and try to deliver a ball and maybe take a hit because of it. We don't want that to happen, and we're, we need to do a better job so it doesn't happen. But can we eliminate it happening? And will he ever be a guy that um, doesn't do everything he can to help the team have a chance to be successful and help that play be a chance have a chance to be successful? I don't think so. I think that's why he is what he is. It's why he is a great player because of that. So I don't know how to change that. We'll finish right here. You've spoken a lot recently about how difficult pass interference is the call. Would you like to see that become a reviewable play? Uh, you know, I, I – Look, I, I, my, my big thing is just consistency. You know, call it the same for everybody. And, um, you know, it's hard to define exactly what you can and can't do. So um, I, I would rather see that happen. In the NFL, they defined exactly what you could and couldn't do. And um, it's, it's a really, really difficult judgment call. Uh, but you knew exactly what you could and couldn't do. And um, I, I think that would be beneficial. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know whether it should be a reviewable call or not. I mean, if we make everything reviewable, why would you call anything? I mean, 
we reviewed one of the hits on Bryce, and well, it wasn't. So I, I don't know. All right, that's all we got. All right, thank you.